Anyway, welcome to Coffee with Clell. This is Coffee. I'm Clell. Praise the Lord. Oh, goodness. The first thing we do is we start off by taking up prayer requests. We're going to pray before we get into anything else. Tonight, we're going to talk about the, uh, the first four seals. Okay? We're going to start off, though, praying about Miss Annie for masses in her body. Lacey Fields has cancer. Her mom, dementia. Cassie and Elizabeth and Blaze, that family needs a, a lot of help. Um... Sherry, um, for her heart, lungs, and family. Sherry Posey for a lymphedema. Curtis for MS. Miss BM for spiritual authority. Finances and help. Cupcake and Snicker. Adriana for her family more and for her to be able to find a place to move to if that's what she needs to do. Uh, Mikey for pain. Trump, troops, USA and Israel. Hayden, Emily, Becca, Tad, and Sarah. Cisco needs to come to it back, get, repent, and get right with God. Thomas, Let's see Thomas, 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 Thomas. There he is, right there. Thomas for his heart. Joe, Renee, Carter, Alex, and Tyler. Jonathan to come home and get renewed in the Lord. Scott Basin for his heart. Tammy for her lungs. Ozzy for house and relocate. Pat Twiggs and Aunt Jan. Shell to come around. Her get her health and and stuff. Get back to where it needs to be. Kenneth for healing, Holly, Eski for special needs, Margie Abula, Sarah for Hep C, Trava for lungs, asthma and surgery, Colton for lungs, Melissa for healing, Denise Geis has cancer, Jenny's MRI, Michael for tests and hospital, Sarah Hall Toll for job, Shannon Moore, Bobby for test results, Kelly for migraine, Megan for a job, and she's hearing voices, that's not good. We need to pray the Lord to close up them ears and let her hear only his Lord, his word. Hallelujah. Um, Dr. Harper, Lewis for surgery in August, Sidiria McGowan, Thomas for his heart, Alexander Anderson for health and his family, Cat Lightfoot for surgery and her heart on the 26th, um, Joey shoulder recovery, Linda for chemo, Tim Michael for surgery, Frederick for chronic kidney, Hannah for Hep C, Bentley, Shirley, that's Shirley's Bentley, Raylene for surgery, and Masses. All right, anybody got anything else? Praise the Lord. Hey, Sarah Lou, good to see you. Praise God. Anybody else got any more prayer, prayer requests? Also, we need to remember the prayer cloth ministry today. This is a prayer cloth right here. We take this guy right here, and we anoint it with oil, and we pray over it. And we do that so that... Uh, a person can have something to pray. It's just, folks, it ain't magic. I don't do magic. Um, I, I, I'm feeling better, feeling weird. Um, I'll tell y'all about it in a minute. Um, I was, uh, we started the prayer cloth ministry about two years ago, a year and a half ago now. Um, a year and four months. We're trying to get over 2,000. We're, we're, uh, we're over 1950, and we're, we're trying to get 2,000. Hopefully this month we'll, we'll knock 2,000 out. If you want a prayer cloth, all you have to do to get one is to email me. This is my email right here. Take a screenshot of it if you want one. You email me or direct message me either way. I need a good mailing address. I don't need to know where you live. I need to know where you get your mail. And uh, so the uh, this is my email. If you want one, then that's how you get one. The, the prayer cloth ministry. Uh, from James 5 and 14 it says gather together if you any more of you among you sick then gather together the elders of the church and they go down there and they're to anoint him with oil and pray over him and then in Acts 19 11 and 12 um, it, it says that um, for God had done great miracles through Paul and so that they would take and send his apron or his handkerchiefs to people that were sick and they're recovered. So it's scriptural. We're not we're not making stuff up. We're not trying to give you a magical prize. This isn't a cracker jack box. This is the true word of God. Okay, so um, that, that's what we got. If you want if you want a, a, a prayer record or if you want a prayer cloth, if you just want to be a member of a worldwide web of prayer warriors, 
you know, you got to request it. I, I, you'd have one now, but I don't know where you live, so I can't, I can't mail you one. So it's absolutely free. All right. So yesterday, long about lunchtime, I felt a wave of my my chronic fatigue hitting, and uh, not like, not like the ones I've had before. But I mean, this one just come in like a. A rush. I was sitting there and uh, talking to D. I was sitting up there. And I, I'd, I'd worked on my bees a little bit, and I come back in. I sit there talking to her, and I was like, "Oh boy, I feel like a nap," you know. And uh, so we sit there for a minute, and um, long about three o'clock, I just nodded, slap off, right? Which you know, you on one hand you're like, "Hey, that's cool," you know. <clears throat> I'm like, no, <clears throat> it can be, but. I nodded off. I didn't wake up until 8.30. Okay? I woke up at 8.30. And when when I woke up, I was like, I felt like somebody had hit me with a truck. And so I, I, I'm like, you know, ain't no way I can do a live video. I, I can stay awake. So, I, you know, I shot a text message to my inner circle moderator group. And, and then I went back and I went back to sleep again. And I slept till this morning at 10.30. And I got up initially. When I got up, man, I felt great. I was like, man, I feel great. And that lasted for about an hour. And all of a sudden, I was like, man, a nap would be good. And so I went back down in the lull there, and I was like, oh, my goodness. I couldn't hold my eyes open. And uh, then, it, you know, it sort, of, it sort of lifted off of me right now. Um, but it's, it's messed up. Hey cat, good to have you. It's messed up. Okay. Because it's like, wow, you know, um, it's the Gulf War syndrome is what it is. But, um, you know, they gave us, um, experimental, um, inoculations over there as well. And so one of the things that it does, it causes you to have, um, chronic fatigue it's no fun so the, anyway it washed over me i said at church i was like man ah, am i gonna be able to do this tonight and so here i am um you know right now i feel okay and uh but i mean i, I slept like it was 16 17 hours and i napped today when, when me and d were sitting in there um long about long about 12 31 o'clock you know i was knocked out and so I, it ain't for lack of sleep. <laughs> it ain't for lack of sleep. But anyhow, let's uh we got all the prayer requests in. Let's go ahead and pray about this. Lord, in Jesus' name we come to you in faith, believe and trust in you, God, lifting you up, magnifying you, the one true God, the everlasting Father and Prince of Peace, the King, the mighty, holy God. Hallelujah, Lord, we love and praise. We thank you for this day and all you've done for us. We ask you, Lord, to watch over us and guide us. Keep us safe and well. Minister to us and through us. In the lovely name of Jesus Christ, we pray, we trust, and we believe. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's good to have everybody uh, on here with us tonight. Um, tonight I, I, I promised y'all we were going to talk about the first four seals, and we're not going to talk about all seven seals. I believe the first four have already been open and the last four aren't going to be open until the last three and a half years, give or take. That's what I believe. But in any event, now that we got everybody in here, I had to take, this is cayenne pepper. I'm fixing to put some on the back of my throat and burn the hair off my tongue. And that's what it does too. It, uh, loosens up your tongue so you can talk a little better um anyhow thank you charles praise god and uh, so so that's where we're at right now if you've got your bibles with you okay i'm going to talk about the four the four horsemen and the significance and and i'm going to tell you this prophecy is two times in the bible it's it's in the book of revelation and it's in the book of zechariah now i don't believe in coincidence Okay, I just don't believe in coincidence. I don't believe that it's a coincidence that um, it's in Revelation 6, verses 1 through 8, and that it's in Zechariah 6, verses 1 through 8, and it's the same 
Uh, it's turned out different, as we're going to see. But I want to I go out here and read this real quick with you. <clears throat> if you've got your Bibles and want to follow along. This is Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 through 8, beginning verse number 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. One of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take the peace from the earth that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed after him, with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. And if you have your Bibles, Zechariah chapter 6, verse number 1 through 8. Now, y'all remember what we just had here, okay? We had four horses. Zechariah sees them in chariots. Uh, by the way, yeah, this is all um, educational purposes only. Thank you, Finn. Educational purpose is only not meant to be realistic in any form or fashion. Um, speculation on, you know, these these um, archaic writings from long, long ago. God bless you. God bless America. Um, you know, comedy and all that good stuff. So um, we're not out here trying to, trying to hurt nobody's feelings, hate nobody, nothing like that. We're just searching for the truth in these tomes of writings. And so, Zechariah 6, verse number 1. And I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, there came four chariots out from between two mountains, and the mountains were mountains of brass. In the first chariot were red horses, in the second chariot, black horses, and in the third chariot, white horses, and in the fourth chariot, grizzled and bay horses. Then I answered and said unto the angel that talked with me, What are these, my lord? And the angel answered and said unto me, These are the four spirits of the heavens which go forth from standing before the Lord of all the earth. The black horses which are therein go forth into the north country, and the white go forth after them, and the grizzled go forth toward the south country, and the bay went forth and sought to go that they might walk to and fro through the earth. And he said, Get you hence, walk to and fro through the earth. So they walked to and fro through the earth. Then cried he upon me, and spake unto me, saying, Behold, these that go toward the north country have quieted my spirit in the north country. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Yep, you're right about that, Vicky. But we have to make those disclaimers because on a global scene, this is a conspiracy theory. How do I know that? Because that's how they dumped me last time. So, here we go. We get four horses. And Zechariah tells us that these are four spirits. Okay? And I want to talk about these four spirits. I'm going to tell you what I what I, I believe I believe they're demonstrated to be. Okay. Um <clears throat> the, the 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 demonstration of what they are, all right? And we're going to talk about what they're carrying. The first one comes out, the the, uh, the white horse comes out, it's carrying a bow. And it's wearing a crown. Now, a bow without an arrow is a club. All right, so it's not a, it's not a faded weapon. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about that in a few minutes. But um, he comes out with a bow, and he's wearing white, he's riding riding a white horse. All right, and wearing a bow and, a, and a carrying a bow, carrying a crown. All right. Then the red and power was given to him that's there to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. 
And the third, all right, it's a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he'd opened the fourth seal, the fourth beast said, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death. And hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Now, I submit to you, hey Bridget, was that you texting me earlier? Um, I submit to you that these four spirits are four religions. Now, they're going to they're look like religions, but they're religions. Okay? The, uh, I'll tell you straight up front, this is, this is what I, 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 I intend to prove to you tonight. The white one is the Catholic Church. The red one is communism. The black one is capitalism. And the pale one, we're going to discuss that, is green. And it is the nation of, of Islam. Okay? Now, how can you say that? Let's go back in here and let's look and see what we can say. How does this come about? All right? Now, so the Zechariah and the third chair that come to... And, and the black horses, which are therein, go forth into the north country, and the white go forth after them. The grizzle go forth toward the south, and the bay went to and fro. All right? And then he cried upon me and said, Bacon to me, saying, Behold, these that go toward the north country have quieted my spirit in the north. Now, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to get this in my mind so that I can get it straightened out here right quick. Um, these are the four prominent pushes in our world today. Okay? Communism, socialism, communism, communism. Uh, you can call it anything you want to. It, it comes back to still being, um, it comes back to still being communism. Okay? Socialism is communism for dummies. Um, so when you look at that, you see this, all right? Red. If, what's the number? All the, all the countries around the world that are, that, that they got red. Communist China, red. Communist Russia, red. Okay, you go to these little communist countries around the world, um, you know, they'll have red in their flags, all right? Um, what does communism always come with? Communism always comes with conflict, all right? It's all, hey, listen. There's a North and a South Vietnam. There's a North and a South Korea. Why is that? Because communists came in and tried to take over the South. And, you know, the United States um, stopped them in, in Korea. But, you know, we, we didn't have the uh, um, fortitude to do it in, 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 in uh, Vietnam. So um, the, when I say the fortitude, I'm talking about the, the, spinal, the spinal column from the... Um, Politicians, not from the men and women fighting over there. I hope you men was ready to quit, and then they declared a ceasefire. We started declaring we need to apologize, stuff like that. But so, if you look at this, I'm gonna tell you these four horses. The red one is communism. The white one is Catholicism. The black horse is capitalism. And the pale horse, if you go back and to do this study on this, and you go back from the Greek, the word that they translated pale from was um, chlorophos, chlor, chlorpho, chlorphos, okay, which means green. All right, the Hayden, um Bible, the, the guy they, 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 they stretched into the Tyndall Bible, um, actually translated it that it was a green horse. Now what happened was these the translators saw chlorophus and that means green, but it, they were like, no such thing as a green horse. And so they're thinking of a physical horse, black, red, white, good, green, not so good. And so they translated it to pale. All right, in the um, Zechariah's version, it says grizzled. Okay, grizzled and strong, let's see. And the third chariot horses and the fourth were grizzled and bay horses, okay? And grizzled, Q, 
can mean strong. Now, I don't I don't know much about horses. They say there's uh, you can they, that a, a horse people know what a grizzled horse is or something like that. I don't know if it's true or not. If there's a horse person out there who wants to chime in, uh, education is a wonderful thing. Um, exactly. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now. Match these things up to uh, to to what we're seeing here. Okay, and the the, the communists. They they uh, take peace from the place. They're always a revolution when they're okay. So boom, there's always a revolution going on with with communism. All right, so there's there's no peace there. You get peace to take from the earth, and and then the uh, the Pope with his his crown. He didn't have a crown when it first started off, um, but now he wears uh, wears a, a crown, uh, and he also wears that big hat. But uh, the crown said uh, it's uh, God's vicar or something like that. Um, you know, they got jealous. That king was getting a crown. Why didn't I get a crown? All right. So um, then, then they, they, the, the black horse, you know, listen, what is capitalism? It's trade. It's the, it's the business of trade. And so they, a measure of wheat for a penny, a measure of you know, love bread. And don't, don't mess with the oil and wine now. All right. That's the big money. Leave that alone for sure. And so, um, does it directly talk about? Is it directly talking about the oil and wire in today's economy? I don't know, but I know that that is what capitalism is about: people um, wanting to get prosperous under capitalism, and then the money, or the love of money, is the root of all evil. Okay, um, and so this becomes their religion in communism. Power becomes the religion. The, the government becomes God. Where do you get your, you got socialized medicine? Where do you get your health care? Government. Socialize the food. They make sure you don't starve. Where do you get your food? The government. Where's your house? The government. Who pays your bills? The government. Okay. Government becomes God with a little G, by the way. Okay. So capitalism, money becomes God. Okay. It's about power. Okay. And you think about it, more money you got more power you got. So it's about power. And so um, <clears throat> then you take the, the Catholic and say, okay, hold on, what's the bow with him? We talked about the Spanish Inquisition the other night. One of the things that the Spanish Inquisition did was um, um, the, the church held the trials on, this, on, the, on the, in, the Inquisition was done by the church. But once you were found guilty you were turned over to local authorities. I believe this fits the bow. They weren't actually doing the deed. They weren't, they weren't, you know, they they had the bow. Okay? They had the implement of death and destruction, but they weren't doing the actual they were they would hand it off. And so that would that would fit to me. Okay, that they would do that because you know, that way they say, Well, we didn't we didn't kill them. We, we, we didn't unlive anybody. We didn't destroy anybody's lives, okay? Hey, Jackson, man, what's up, sunshine? You know, they didn't do that. So when, when you're looking at that, you ask yourself, okay, wait a minute, hold on. Yeah, now look at it. Thank you, Ava. That you look at it now, you say, okay, that makes sense. Now it's making sense. Now, then we move over to that grizzled horse, the green horse. And you say, how are you coming up with, uh, with Islam on that? Okay, by the way, we're not attacking Islam, we're not saying anything bad about them. We love Islamic people too. They make great Christians, okay? Give them the truth in them. And uh, so, um, but, you know, I've got some men to people that I know. Now, so then, um, then, if you go up on the Temple Mount, uh, all the gates are painted green. I'm gonna ask y'all a question, let me see. Finn, do you know what Muhammad's favorite color was? I will give you a clue, look, I will give you a clue. Okay, and so it was his favorite color. And so they paint stuff green. They paint their iron fences green. They paint their, uh, they got house lights, they're green. They, they light the mosque up at night in green, okay? They're, they're, and and it make at the same time it's making a statement, okay? We own this, okay? 
we own this. Folks, if, if y'all think that putting lights out in front of your house doesn't make a statement, hang a red light on your front porch. Because we all know it does. Okay, so then it says that the then it says that the black horse, black chariot, and the white chariot go to the north. Now, eighty percent of all of the world's wealth is in the northern hemisphere. Now, by the same token, you would think, well, that's where the biggest populations are. And your question is, are they? Okay, or are they not? I'm not saying they are or ain't. By and large, they really are because that's where the big industrial cities are. There's just not a lot of them on the Southern Hemisphere. But that spirit went to the South, the one on that, that pale horse, the one on that grizzled horse. Now let's look at that. And you look and you see that down below that hemisphere is where the majority of that religion lies. Okay? It's very prolific. It's growing very fast. Um, so if you think about that, then they move down there and all of a sudden you got all of that persecution and stuff like that. And it's, so grizzle can mean strong. I mean, I'm sorry, no transition. Grizzle can mean strong. All right. So you said, what do you mean it can mean strong? Grizzle can mean strong. And if you're talking about a religion, it's a strong religion. Once you're in it, it's cultic. Okay. You try to leave it, they get real, real ugly about you trying to relieve it. And uh, so you're like, huh, think about that. So it's real strong and it's green. And then if you go back into Revelation 6, all right. And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard a voice say, come and look. And I looked and behold, a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him. Now, I contend that, that that makes that a false religion. It's a very strong religion in, 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 how, in its control over the people to it. Okay, number one. It worships death. We're Christians, we worship life. We want life and life more abundantly. Okay, I'm not strapping any kind of device on me and going someplace to uh, introduce myself to uh to a, to a, to a name god like that okay not gonna do it why because hell follows okay death rides the horse and hell follows so it's i believe it's letting you know that that's a lie you think you're going to get you know 72 virgins and you're not going to okay it's not going to happen that way and so I believe that that's, that's the way we're looking at it. Now, why, what is important about this? Because I was preaching the last two nights before here. I was talking about the oneness of God, Jesus' name, baptism. And I was talking about the, how the Catholic Church was born in politics. It will almost guaranteed be the, the Antichrist is going to be the Pope, whoever the Pope happens to be. Okay? Back in, I want to say, it, it had to be in the early 90s. They finally took a pope from Poland, okay? They hadn't took a pope from, well, he was the first pope taken from a Soviet bloc nation. He was a first pope taken from a social socialist, okay, nation. And since then, all of the popes have come from socialist nations. And so the... The thing is, is you know, everybody, you'll hear people hollering, uh, "No state and no state." And, well, well, the Catholic Church was born in politics. Okay, um, that was what that was what was all all, all about. The, poli the 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 Catholic Church was born in politics. They were it was made the the state church by Constantine to consolidate the power base of people that were calling themselves Christians. They had tried persecuting them. That hadn't worked real well. So they consolidated it by going and talking to the leadership of the church and getting the leadership of the church to buy into the government. That's what I say. The Catholic Church was born in religion. 
for to, to say they're gonna that he's gonna be the Antichrist is not a stretch at all. Look at the way it worked and look at the way it went. The Spanish Inquisition that did the same exact thing. Okay, they went the Spanish Inquisition. Um, the church was the uh, when I said the, the Catholic Church was the was they didn't they didn't actually swing the blade they didn't set the fires they turned people over to the local governments now the local governments were wanting to make sure that these people believed that they had a zeal for the lord all right so they would do things which they probably would not have ordinarily have done to make sure that no nobody looked at them and said wait a minute you didn't seem zealous enough to you know to go crazy about that um, so um, that that's where that's where that's always been. At. There's there's always been the, the the doctrine of the Trinity, which is the foundational cornerstone of. And as I showed y'all last night, that is the, the the cornerstone of the um, Catholic Church is the Triune God. The cornerstone of Jesus Church is that he is the Messiah, which is God manifest in the flesh. And so <clears throat> if, you're, if, you're, if you're studying Trinity, you need to take Revelation 18 and 4 to heart when he said, come out from among them. Okay? You find yourself in, listen, you find yourself in, I've been doing this all my life. I've been in this church all my life. I love these people. I ain't arguing with you. I hope you love your soul more because that's what's going to take. And listen, here's the thing. If you don't, if you know the truth and you sit down there, even if you obey the truth and you sit down and you don't tell those people that truth, God's going to charge you with that. 18 and four, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye may, may be, you be made, <laughs> that ye be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. God is going to, God is going to, punish that harlot okay any church that that teaches that 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 trinitarian doctrine the catholic church according to they did uh, that continent or whatever it was in uh 1960 something and declared that all of if, if anybody out there that baptizes in the, the the triune titles is good to go with the catholic church they're making peace so they can draw their daughters back in Folks, don't don't think for a minute. Her, she's riding on that beast, and on her on her forehead it says "Mother of Harlots." You know that's that's what we've got to watch out for. We can't uh, we can't you can't allow yourself to get caught up in all that. Now, these four um, these four spirits out here. If you think about how this is looking. If you think about how you look at this, that these, these four horsemen are coming out here and you look at it and ask yourself, the scarlet beast that the, the harlot is going to ride on in Revelation 17, that scarlet beast is the, is, is the government of communism or socialism, either which way you look at it. But that's what it's going to be. They're going to, they're going to do a one world government. It's going to happen. Okay, since probably 19, probably 91 when the Berlin Wall came down, or after, well, the Berlin Wall came down, what, 89? Okay, but the Berlin Wall came down, <clears throat> and and the world started going, ha-ha, we beat communism. I, I did not see that. I, I did not. I, I was like, we didn't beat them. Uh, you know, it... it I've been, I've been, you know, I've been in America a long time. I've been studying communists for a long time. And one of the things they don't do is just up, and, up daisy and quit. Here's what I believe happened. I believe that they had affected so many of the other governments across the wall that the wall was no longer needed. When they, when they took the wall down, there were 15 countries in, in Europe. Within 10 years, 13 of those countries in the in the EU had socialistic government. Like I said, if, if you do your math, socialism is communism for dummies. It's giving the power of the to 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 the government to dole out. All right? Now, the the first axiom of Marxism, which is the basics for communism, 
is from each according to ability to each according to need. There's a, uh, a little story I, I see periodically and I, I, I pop it back in there. And uh, it's about this, this girl, she's uh, going to school and, and she's talking to her dad and her dad's, you know, oh dad, you know, you shouldn't drive that Mercedes. It's a, you know, it's a plague. We've, we've got, we should be driving a small electric car just big enough to get us for this. You know, there's so many people out there that are suffering. And, and you know, and you know, of course she's going to, and she's getting fed, you know, from these, uh, these liberal, you know, professors and stuff like that. And her dad's over and he goes, oh, okay. You know, he goes, well, how's your, uh, how's your GPA doing? And she said, oh, it's great. She said, I got a 4.2 right now. So they're just knocking it out. She said, but it's tough. She said, you know, cause, uh, you know, I have to, I, I can't, uh, I can't party all the time and I've got to I'm staying here and I'm, you know, I've got to stay on the books. I'm gonna keep that grade up. And her dad says, well, how's your friend Connie doing? Uh, I don't know. She's probably squeaking by on 2.0, but all she does is party and, you know, um, you know, she squeaks by and she misses a lot of school and, um, you know, just all, you know, nothing like that. She, well, you reckon she'll make it through? So, I don't know right now. Probably not, Daddy. So, well, so won't you go down to the, to the office and tell them that you want to give one of your numbers, you go from a four to a three, and you can give your three to Connie and, and y'all can both have threes. And she said, no way. She said, I've worked my fanny off for this grade. I've worked really hard and all that, all she does is sit around and do nothing. She doesn't deserve this, it's mine. And he said, welcome to the Republican party, my dear. Because that's the difference in the focus and understanding, okay? All the people out there that, that pay your, your fair share stuff, that's garbage, guys. Um, but we're not going down that road. Finn will get on to me. Be hard to believe that. Man, I hate that, buddy. I hate that. That is rough. Uh, so then you look at it and you ask yourself the question, these four spirits, and look at the look at the way this goes. The uh, um, there's over a billion Catholics. There's two point one point 1.4 billion um, Muslims, I think is the number now, 1.7. It might be up, I don't know. All right, but then you do capitalism. The During the studies, people will tell you that people, countries go to war over economics, over money, okay, over religion, and just wanting the assets that another country's got, okay? And uh, so, so you have to understand that. But most of the wars have been fought. As a matter of fact, most of the wars have been fought, have, have had the, uh, the Pope's hand on them. Okay? Um, go, go and Google it. Um, you know, but go Google it. Go, I don't even know if you can find it like it is. But, you know, you have to study real history. You can't study what they're, you know, what they're giving you out here. I told him, I said, these idiots running right here knocking these, knocking these statues down. <clears throat> all, those, uh, all those people that owned people back then were, were Democrats, okay? And so they're perfectly happy letting you knock over statues to remind you of who they are. Just saying, you know. So <laughs> that truth's out there, folks. But you got to be wanting to see it. Hallelujah. Now that's what I wanted to talk about. Got anybody got any questions on, on, on how that is? I, I just wanted to talk about those four horsemen because we had been talking about the um, the, the, the the way the, the way the church is set up, uh, the oneness doctrine that uh, that Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. And I wanted to do that because these four these four spirits, okay, these are spirits that control the hearts of men. Money, power, with government subservience, um, just pure D religion, and pure D religion. Okay, and so you know you got a, a set of rules. That's exactly right, Finn. That's what I said. Now they can say, "No, we didn't do that." 
Wasn't us. Nice. Used to be a statue there. I uh, some Republican owned a bunch of slaves. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yep. And there he goes. Hey Joey, you wanna come on tonight? I see him in my we'll see if he can come up tonight. But uh that's when you when you've got those six those seals, those first four seals come out, <clears throat> the first one I believe opened up three twenty five AD. Okay. The second one, 1850, was when Marxism came. Um, by and large, the Industrial Revolution brought us into the capitalism. And here in the last part, you've got the uh, the surge, the, the largest growing religion on the planet right now, wears a green flag around it all the time. Uh, that's how you rewrite history. Exactly, Angela. You, you, you remove the landmarks, and then my guess is as good as yours at where they were and what they were and who they were doing. Um, you know, it's a and 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 it's proven effect. That's one of the Marxist things, is to remove the uh, remove the education stones, that way, um, and then the next thing they'll do is they'll start uh, eliminating the people that helped them get there. Um, how many y'all know who Shay Gavaz was? Was it Gavaz? Anyway, Chavera. Everybody knows who Che was, right? He was. Uh, Castro's number two man, you know, he was Castro's number two man. And then after they took over Cuba, he became his number one threat. You know, then what do you think happened? <clears throat> you know, think about it. Um, anybody ever been in some of these older, uh, some of these big old huge Catholic churches? Okay. You ever think about that? Think about it. Why? Why are there people starving to death? Because that church ain't about. It's about accumulating money, power. Ah, hallelujah. <clears throat> You've got that right, Matt. It, it, and that's all we're going to do. We're going to repeat it. Um, anyhow, is that all? Anybody got any questions? Right? Because, um, all right, I'm going to start reading in chapter, verse number nine now. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And the white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Okay, so is that one been open or not? I think that one's going to be opened um about three and a half years in the final seven. That's what I said, Ben. He became he became his number one competitor, and uh, you know people started liking him, and uh, then he got unalive. Amazing how that works. And I beheld he opened the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. And the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as the fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of the mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it was rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every freeman, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and to the rocks, Fall on us! And hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For that great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? Hmm. Heavens are going to roll back. Sound like rapture to me. What do you think? Okay. And after this, after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth holding 
<clears throat> the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed, and 144,000 of the tribes of the children of Israel. 144,000 is Israel, okay? That's it. It has nothing to do with Gentiles. We're Gentiles, by the way. Okay? And he goes on and tells about 12,000 from each tribe, okay? And I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindred and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell down before the throne of their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made their, them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them and shall lead them into the living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Hallelujah. <sighs> in chapter 8, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Now, he opens the seventh seal and he's got half an hour of silence. And you say, well, why is it? I believe that's because it's going to be the rapture of the church. The sixth seal was to roll back the heavens. The rapture's coming up. I got to imagine the angels have never seen anything like that. They're going like a cow looking at the new gate. Okay? Just sitting there going, wow. You know, just looking in, in absolute awe as God performs the promised resurrection of the church. Okay? He's going to do that new thing. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne of God. I'm sorry, before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came into the prayers of the saints, ascending up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there was voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Hallelujah. Now, and then the seven trumps come right behind there. Now, the they overlap one another, okay? There's not going to be seven seals, then seven vials, then seven thunders, then seven, seven um, trumpets, okay? They overlap one another. Think of the seals as the long-term story. They, they started somewhere around 300 A.D., okay? That was when the first seal, the white horse, was broken open, okay? 1850, Karl Marx wrote his book. Um, the Industrial Revolution come in, and the United States comes in with capitalism. It comes in, and now with Islam and, and coming to power, um, fulfilling, I believe, the, the, fourth, uh, the fourth horse. So they're out here. But the fifth seal is not open for later on, probably probably about a three-year three mark or something like that, um, when the Antichrist comes to rise, I believe the fifth seal will be broken open because it will need something to happen right now. And so the sixth seal is the is the the rapture, and the seventh seal is God shaking the earth. He's coming back at Armageddon. That's also the rapture, by the way, okay? The seventh seal, sixth and seventh seal, the seventh trumpet, and the seventh vial are all the same thing. The seven seven sevens are, but they're all the same thing. They're all the rapture, okay. So um, if you go to that was the seventh, that was the seventh seal. The seventh 
uh, trumpet is Revelation 11, verse 9. Now, I'm going to read this over again, and then you put these pieces together because this is going to make so much sense. The seventh seal. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire, and the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Voices, thunderings, lightning, earthquake. The seventh trumpet. And the temple of God was open in heaven, and there was seen in this heaven the ark of the testament, and were given lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail and great hail. Okay, same event. And the the seventh vial, the seventh thunder isn't in here. We don't know what it's in it. The seventh vial is. Revelation 16, 18. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and a great earthquake. And down in verse 21, and there fell upon me in great hail. So listen, it's the same exact event. This is this is the rapture of the church. We're going to have the rapture. Boom. All right. And we're going to come right back with Armageddon. All right. Now, one way, guys, says you put it in there and it actually comes in with the... Uh, we go to the marriage supper of the Lamb, and then we go down behind them. Um, you know, boom. And we go down there and clean up, and then we go into the 1,000-year millennial reign. All right? So um, there's so much. There's so much for us to gain here, for us to understand. The, um, in, the, in the olden days, they said, well, you can't understand. You can't understand it. You can't understand it. But Daniel, in Daniel 11 and Daniel 12... Um, let me catch this for you real quick. In Daniel, let's see. in Daniel 12, verse 9, it said, uh, well, let me, I'm going to read 8. And I heard, but I understood not. Then I said, oh, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Okay, they're closed up and sealed till the time of the end. But in 11, 33, it said, And they that understand among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword and by the flame, by captivity and by spoil many days. So understanding is available. Now, this, it still goes, to, we don't know the, the day and the hour, okay? But doggone it, we should know the season. All right, we should be able to discern, and we can discern. These things are in there. If we will, uh, first and foremost, you got to ask God to give you understanding. Okay? If you're not going to ask God for understanding, okay, think about it. I can read all this stuff, and you can know it left, right, and center, and still not be able to discern it. And again, the thunders, which were in chapter 10, I think, And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud and rainbow. Uh, yeah, in verse number, and, and cried with a loud voice, and as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. So, all right, we don't have all the pieces to the puzzle, folks. All right, so it's going to, to put it all together. We can't do it. You can't put it all together. You don't have it all. You've got missing pieces. When this doesn't fit together. Um, and so that, that's, that's what we're going to do. We want to make sure. Listen, I study the Word of God. All right, for all the people out there that think that that uh, we can't, God couldn't keep his word together. The sun is right where he left it. The earth circles the sun every 365 and one quarter days. The moon circles the earth every 28 days. The tides go in, the tides go out. We get winter, spring, summer, and fall. Okay? All of the other planets out here are on their exact correct course. All right, I believe if God can do all that, he can probably keep his word together for a couple thousand years. Okay? I mean, come on. You know, Doubting Thomas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, 
And that's what that's what you have to watch for people is they will have decided already that it can't be done or it won't be done. This guy's um, he's, he's going around about it. he's getting his wife to call D to call me and ask if we want to teach him a Bible study. Uh, his 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 context is the Bible's not true, and I'm looking. There's no sense in trying to teach a person a Bible study if he believes the Bible is not true. Okay. You know, he said, wait a minute. If it, constant, what do you mean? Constant. In the Word of God. My only authority to teach is the Word of God. Well, you can say, and listen, one of the things we have, when I've been, been teaching here the last few days about the oneness doctrine and about the other, um, the, um, the Catholic Church and stuff, and, and what, I t what I've been trying to tell people is, Do you want to be liked or do you want to be right? Okay? Do you want to have a, a, a very popular religion or doctrine or would you rather have the one that the apostles taught? All right? Because, you see, God taught the apostles. Jesus himself taught the apostles. All these all these doctrines coming out, all these traditions coming out, this Trinitarian, all this Trinitarian, this coming out years later as a result of trying to get men and women into church, they compromised on the church. You know, um, folks, if you, you tell me you don't see this around you today, okay? Um, my baby wouldn't have done, my baby, no, my baby never done, no, he never would have done that. She never would have done that, okay? Um, and it's like, yeah. Everybody that knows your baby's got a different story to tell, okay? If you don't have accountability, if you're not going to account yourself, if you're not going to hold yourself accountable to God's Word, then you're going to see it. It's going to blow right by you, and you're going to be like, oh, you know, doesn't matter to me. I'm okay. And, you know, you're like, are you? I mean, you know, are you? Are you okay? Because... There's there's a lot of there's a lot of things that we do in this life that are you know upsy downsy. I want to make sure that I'm getting my answers as closely as I can from the Bible, and so the Bible gives one way of salvation. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Charlotte. Um, the the Bible is the answer, and and we if we're getting our answers from men from the traditions of. I was raised in a church, and they taught as close to a church as I was raised. Um, and, and we were taught these, these traditions, okay? Well, you know, you said your prayer, you're okay. And I'm like, well, what if I go out and do some more? Don't you worry. God's got you. It never, never made sense to me because I, I understood what repentance was. If you repent of doing something, you won't do it. <laughs> I'm going to try to do that again tomorrow maybe not tomorrow in a few days i got a lot of honey i got to get um, but you've got, you've got if you don't found your doctrine on the word of God then what you have are the traditions of men and the traditions of men will not carry you that will not carry you. You'll be sitting there and you'll be thinking that you're, um, you know, you're okay. And what does Matthew 7, 21 to 23 say? For many will come in, in the last day saying, Lord, Lord, didn't we, didn't I cast out demons in your name? Didn't I, you know, and he's going to say, get away from me. He works in it. I have not known you. How in the world they're going to serve God all their life, faithfully serving because somebody that they trusted taught them a lie. But sister, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to teach the truth. And if it offends you, then you are offended by the truth. Because I love you. God loves you. God loves you enough to send men like me that will tell you the truth. Knowing that there is a number of people who will see that truth and will unfriend me or try to report me or anything like that. But I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, um, God said it, 
and that settled it. And if you don't want to believe it, that's your right. Nobody, nobody going to chase you down to try and make you do it, okay? But I was raised in that church. They, they taught us, uh, you know, once you were saved, you're always saved. Now, the Bible's true. No man can snatch you from the Father's hand. That's absolute truth. But see, God never took your, your, your personal will out. Here we go. We have detected inactivity during your current life. Complete the verification to continue your life. <laughs> so, um, he, he said, he didn't know that the, he thought that the, he said his contention is the Bible was written a bunch of Egyptians looking at pictures, wrote the Bible, and I'm like, you know, if your position is that you're trying to prove something wrong, okay, take off. I'm not interested in hearing your hogwash, okay? Um, you got an argument. I've got testimony. You're going to tell me what, you're going to tell me what you think. I'm going to tell you what I know. I know that's right. There's there are there there's a lot of pastors following. There's going to be more. Um, that's the point, Charlotte. Is that God never took your free will. No man can pluck you from the Father's hand, but you can turn and walk out when you get good and ready. You know, and so He gave you your free will. And so these people that come out there and there, and I met them and. Uh, wonderful people that believed they were serving God. They felt like they could go and do anything that they wanted to. They wanted, that's one position to take in a, uh, I think, I think we're going to have it. We're going to have to, uh, we have to go back to the basics, Mac. That's exactly right now. <laughs> I know, but I know, feel right. Hallelujah. Take care of ONA for me, would you? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's exactly right. You know, that's exactly right. But, uh, you know, it's the way it goes. <sighs> hallelujah, thank God. There's a there's a ton of of, uh, of what we need to be doing. I'm, I'm not 100%. Y'all probably couldn't tell it. No. <laughs> I'm not 100%. Um, I am tired, and I don't have a reason. I slept from yesterday at 3 till this morning. I woke up long enough to come in here and get in the bed, and uh, then I slept till then. And I, I got up this morning, um, went out with the dogs for a few minutes, and come back in and crashed. And uh, it's the way I've been all day long. Uh, don't don't name names. <laughs> I mean, you know, you, if you know the names, I know, and and, and it's no. But uh, well, I'm I'm trying not to try people on social media. Um, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a bunch of churches out there, and here's the thing, um, no internet. Okay, okay, Adriana. Well, you know, our prayers are for you. Um, let me tell you. The uh, the church has gotten away from its first love, and its first love is now and should always have been um, outreach, winning souls. Okay, wow, one million without electricity, ouch. Okay, um, but if you would think about that, if you do this, you go out there and you you say you're going to have your church. Okay, well. When we have in church, we should have our outreach should be going. It should be up and, and running. Now, um, one of the things that the government has done that the that the the devil has done is gotten all these places where you can't you really you can't walk up and knock on a door anymore. Gated communities and all that good stuff, right? Uh, they don't want you in there. No solicitation. They'll get the law on you and drag you out. You know, kind of stuff. And so um, the the church as a whole, has not become creative. Now, 
they, they have not they have not sought, if you will, different ways to reach people. If you can't walk up to their door, find a way to get to the door. You may have to use um, you may have to use um, the mail service or flyer service or uh, there's a whole lot of different ways to do it to get your your name. You might buy a billboard. Um, you know, the old the old fashioned kind of getting out walking the roads and just knocking on doors. That was very it was very effective, believe it or not. Okay? It's one of the reasons that they want it shut down. It's very effective because you reach across and you talk to a person, you might shake their hand. Folks, if you don't know what touch does, touch is a selling point. Um, one of the things, how many of y'all have ever seen the, uh, I don't know, it was a long time ago, it was the, 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 the demon was trying to touch the man and uh, they, were, they wouldn't let him touch him. And they're saying, you know, if you can't touch him, if you can't touch him, because touch matters, okay? Exactly, Charlotte, there's, there's ways. Uh, no, they don't, Julie, they don't. Um, mine does, but, you know, um, I go to a, a UPC church in Jasper, Georgia, and all UPC churches aren't doing it. And, and that's, that was what I was talking about, is we need to be getting back to the basics of, of what, we're, what we're preaching and teaching. Tomorrow, Lord willing, I'm going to speak on the new birth. That's my idea that I'm going to do, okay? Um, I hadn't talked about the new birth in a while. And, uh, you know, one of the things that people have to come to understand is that when, when you teach the new birth, the way the, the Bible tells us plainly that the way to heaven is, is, is narrow and few there be that find it, right? And then it says, but the gate to hell is wide open and there it's going to be tracking down there, right? Um, yep, that's, that's what I'm saying. Sarah Lou, that's exactly what I'm saying. That they want to touch you. Um, you know, they want to touch you. What we need to do is we need to get back to the the straight teachings from the Word of God. I'm gonna start when I start my teachings, when I'm gonna teach on the Word of God, when um, about baptism, when I'm gonna teach on salvation. I'm gonna start teaching in John with Nicodemus. Jesus told him, "Clean straight out, you must be born again." And Nicodemus, he's like, "Huh? How can I like you know?" Eh. No, Jesus didn't even address it. Except a man be born again of water and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. If that don't scare people, if you're not ready, folks, let me tell you right now, one of the things that I teach people to do is, is uh, self-assessment. All right. I mean, y'all been camping, going on a hike, something, going on a road trip. Okay. Going on a road trip. And you've got your list. It's your last minute list. Check, 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 right? That's a self-assessment. And we need to self-assess. I need to ask myself, listen, if this preacher is preaching something and it's applicable to me, do I line up with the Word of God? As opposed to, and y'all know how this works, okay? Everybody out here, I've done it, you've done it, everybody's done it. Nah, I'm good. I'm good. No, man, I'm good. I got it. And then you go out there and... Pfft, you're like, oh my goodness. Hey, Doc, it's good to see you. Okay. Hey, well, you know, then all of a sudden there you are and you're, you don't have the item that you needed because you didn't do a self-assessment. We need to self-assess. Do, do I line up with the Word of God? Not with, not with the, the UP standard, um, not with the Baptist, not with the Methodist, not with the Episcopalians, the Catholic, not with whatever church a person may go to. Do I line up with what God says? Okay? Think about that. Do I line up with what the Word of God says? Because getting in the kingdom of God is very simple. Okay? And, 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 and the fact that it's very simple uh, is what the the devil has tried to make it all kind of. There was a guy told me said one time he he was uh, he said he was going to get going to get baptized. He says probably going to take him about three months. And I said do what? He said he had to go through cataclysm class or something. 
And uh, he had to go through this class, and, and until he'd gotten through the class, they wouldn't baptize him. And I said, you know, the eunuch on the back of that chariot said, here's water, what hindereth us? And Philip and he went down to the water and they baptized him right there. That's the way, if a person is about to, if a person is about to uh, ask me to baptize him, brother, if there's water, we're going to baptize him. Okay? Uh, baptize you in a river, baptize you in a creek, baptize you in a, a water trough, whatever we got. Why? Because it's important. It's not something to put off and do when you get around to it. It's not around to it kind of item. It's important. It needs to be done. You know? And, uh, you know, we've got, you know, Bible's, Bible's very specific. Except a man be born again of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now, that's Jesus speaking. If you want to argue, go argue with him. Okay? Men took those doctrines and, and platted them down because they didn't want to do it. You know? Didn't want to do it. Plain and simple. You, don't, and you can't tell me what to do. I don't want to know. You can't tell me. But God, I mean, God's not going to force you to do it. But then at the same time, where he's not going to force you to do it, um, you better be ready for option two when you go up there. And it's not going to be um, entering into that rest, that good and faithful. Sure. The doctrines are not man-made, Jade. The, the ones that, the traditions are man-made. Doctrines are, are the ones that come from the Bible. Uh, the ones that I'm talking about are the ones that come from the Bible. Doctrine means teachings. So, you know, it, you're right. There, a lot of people have got their, their doctrines and they got some biblical doctrines and then they throw in some extras. Matt, what's up, buddy? And they'll they'll throw in some extras and or they'll water them down or they'll take them and, and stretch them to mean something different. That's how they got the doctrine of the Trinity. That Matthew's church was all Jews. They all knew Hero is the Lord our God is one Lord. They had to stretch it. They had to get people where they weren't looking. They had to get people where they weren't looking. You know, denominations are definitely man-made. That's and there's not a question of that. That's why I tell people I had a kid come to I baptize him in Jesus' name, and he said he said, "Can I still go to my church?" I said, "Sure, you can." He said, can I not be a Catholic or am I Catholic? I said, if you will call yourself a Catholic, you'll be a Catholic. I don't know anything about it. I'm not try I'm not here to beat him up, uh, you know. And uh, I baptized a Muslim guy in the, the jail, and he started crying. And I was like, what's up, man? He said, he said, if I go home, my mother and father will have me stoned. I was like, for real? And he goes, yeah, man. He said, I'm from Iran. He said, uh, if I tell them I've been baptized in Jesus' name, they will, they will have me stoned. And I said, wow. So he's crying. I said, I said, you might be the only chance they ever get. You know, get stronger in the Lord. I said, we, we should be witnesses, okay? We should be witnessing God's love, God's testimony to me 